Hello, my name is Orla Farmer and I'm delighted to present on the Ladies Gaelic Football Research Pod. I will be presenting a recently published study on the Gaelic for Girls intervention as part of my PhD research. So just to give you a bit of a background on myself, I am a lecturer in sport education in the earlier sector in Dundalk IT. I also am a qualified physical education teacher I recently defended my PhD research, which focuses on the Gaelic for Girls intervention. And I play ladies football with Cork Senior Ladies Footballers, and I also play with my club Middleton. So I am one of three authors of the study, uh, Dr. De Kevin Call and Dr. Wesley O'Brien, both of whom were my PhD supervisors. Uh, the research article is entitled Gaelic for Girls, the Effectiveness of a 10-Week Multi-Component Community Sports-Based Physical Activity Intervention for 8 to 12-year-old girls. And that study is published in the International Journal of Environmental Research and Public Health. Just to give you a bit of a background on the study, um, research has shown that girls are less active than boys worldwide and that they, they tend to drop out at a higher rate compared to boys, um, particularly coming into that adolescence period. There is a lack of research focusing specifically on female youth physical activity and sport participation, um, particularly in the community-based setting. So um, most of the research would be conducted kind of in a school-based setting and not so much focused on that whole community-based setting. So, the research behind this study um, is focusing on the Gaelic for Girls programme, which is already an existing programme in the Ladies Gaelic Football Association. So this study essentially is trying to put an evidence base behind the programme to tailor the programme so that, you know, essentially more girls can play and stay involved in, in ladies football. The objective of the study was to assess the effectiveness of the multi-component community sports-based intervention. So the Hope the Gaelic for Girls programme to increase physical activity levels, to in increase fundamental movement skills, proficiency, to become better at skills, and also to enhance psychological well-being. So things like self-efficacy, self-esteem, enjoyment levels, confidence, all of that. Um, as relative to a second treatment group. So Basically, the revised research informed Gaelic for Girls intervention versus the traditional program versus a control group which had no Gaelic for Girls program. We, we compared the newly revised Gaelic for Girls intervention in comparison to the traditional program that's been running with the last 13 years in comparison to a, contr a control group which had no Gaelic for Girls program. So the methodology involved included 120 8 to 12 year old girls at the mean age of 10 years uh, from 18 different schools, both rural and urban, in three ladies Gaelic football clubs. So one club in Kerry, one and two clubs in Cork. So intervention group one, so participants that received intervention group one received the revised Gaelic for Girls intervention. So prior to this study, research had been undertaken as part of my PhD to get an indicator of what girls like, you know, what, what motivates girls, what stops girls from playing, um, in order to tailor the intervention. So participants that received intervention group one um, received all the research-informed strategies um, versus intervention group two, which was the existing program. So a club um, received just the program, no additional supports, no research informed strategies. The control group in group three, so participants in group three then received no Gaelic for Girls program. So they just trained as normal in their club setting with their own coaches and again received no Gaelic for Girls program. So testing took place before the 10 weeks and after the 10 week intervention program. So participants received um, surveys, so questionnaires, they filled in questionnaires before and after. Their skills were also assessed, so basic skills that were relevant to football, kicking, catching, jumping, um, balancing, those skills were assessed. And also a focus group interview was conducted with the intervention group one after the 10 week program. 
So just to summarize that again, uh, participants were either in inter intervention group one, the revised program with all the research informed um, resources and additional support. Um, the second group entailed the participants who received the Gaelic for Arts program. So again, the program that had been running as normal the last 13 years received no additional support uh, in terms of the research and foreign practices. And then the third group of participants received no program, so they just trained as normal in the club. Just in terms of the revised Gaelic for Girls intervention participants, so they received 10 one hour weekly sessions. They also re received additional support, such as a fundamental movement skill chart to, as an incentive to practice skills and also a ladies Gaelic football fundamental movement skill dance. So a sub sample of the participants participated in this dance and the whole purpose of it was to try and increase the confidence and competence in fundamental movement skills in ladies Gaelic football skills and participation um, and also include elements such as like fun and the social interaction and enjoyment. Uh, in terms of the coach component, so uh, participants the coaches in group one also received uh, weekly upskilling workshops and electronic resources. So each week prior to the sessions, the coaches received little electronic clips into a WhatsApp group. Um, the sessions were, were planned and the researcher went into the club and was there as you know a support structure for the coaches, for the planning, for the reflective practices on a weekly basis for the coaches. In terms of the parental component, parents also received a parent's evening, which consisted of a workshop for parents, ed educating parents and empowering parents to, I suppose, be role models for their daughters and to co-participate and, you know, I suppose, encourage that praise and encouragement aspect of it as well for their daughters. A WhatsApp group and a face group, Facebook group was also um, set up for parents as an additional support structure as well. So just again, that's just group one. Group two, uh, which is the traditional program, received the program as normal. So they would have had received the 10 week of ladies skilling football skills. Um, they would have received one coach workshop. So with the revised program, it was on a weekly basis and they would have also received parental support, but at a much um, lesser, I suppose, level really in terms of of the traditional program and again group three no program so the results in terms of the the group one the research informed program the participants self-reported levels improved in group one there was no improvement in group two and also in group three so again it's self-reported which means that the participants uh, self-reported on a survey which is is a limitation really to the study um, so, but, but also it's seen as a positive that they felt that they were more active after the 10 weeks as opposed to group two and group three. In terms of fundamental movement skills, SMS or proficiency improved in group one. So the participants felt um, improved, small improvements there, but they were significant in terms of basic skills like running, uh, skipping, balancing, uh, bouncing a ball, kicking a ball, catching a ball. Uh, in comparison to the traditional run program and the control group. In terms of peer and parental social support, this improved in terms of group one and again, no improvement in group two and group three. So really what we're seeing so far is that there is a small improvement in the group one participants which received the research informed program. Participants in group one also reported higher enjoyment levels than group two and group three. So overall, it was positive. Uh, the research informed program was positive in terms of the physical aspect of it, but also in terms of the, you know, the emotional, the psychological aspect. They had fun, they reported higher levels of enjoyment um, and that whole element of peer support and the social support from their parents. In the qualitative data, so the focus groups then results were positive also. So participants in group one um, were interviewed after the 10 week programme and reported positive experiences of the, the 10 week programme, um, such as fun with their friends, 
I know it was nice to meet girls from other schools there. They also reported confidence in their skill at execution. So, you know, one participant stated that she couldn't really solo the ball at first, so prior to the programme, but then when the programme, you know, started, she said she became better, she felt she became better. Um, similarly, when I catch the ball before, I was sort of afraid, but now I'm not afraid and the programme helped me. So you can see there that, you know, fun and friends, confidence and skill execution was positive. Other um, reports were that of female role models. So participants expressed, I suppose, a need for more female role models in, you know, in their clubs, in the schools. I liked when the Cork girls, the senior girls came down, we got to meet them and they signed their jerseys. Um, and, the, and these young girls looked up to, you know, not, not just elite players, but older players in their club. The station-based approach also came through in the focus group interviews. And they liked the way that they moved from, from one station after 10 minutes, that element of variety, uh, and also the matches. You know, of course, every, every young person loves to, to be playing games. And, and that came through in the focus group interviews as well. In terms of barriers to the program, and um, when when the participants were asked, you know, what what would stop girls maybe from going to game for girls or going to training, and um, uh, I suppose body image came came through, and the whole idea of social acceptance from friends. So you know, maybe their friends might say, "Oh, you're not good at football, and you're not good at stuff." So again, that kind of comparison to their friends, kind of worrying about their, what their friends might think. Also body image, you know, they didn't like, they expressed the idea of, of they didn't like getting mucky, getting their hair messy or sweaty. Other barriers included lack of confidence in terms of skill acquisition. You know, if they can't do, this, do the skills, they might get frustrated and as a result, they might drop out. Um, the competitive nature was also expressed as a, as a barrier. Uh, when you go to secondary school, you move up to the under 14s, and that's a bit more competitive than under 12s. But maybe girls don't enjoy it anymore then. So, you know, those those key things coming from the focus groups are, are are important in terms of you know how can we try and get more girls to stay involved. So, why are these findings important? So, essentially, in a nutshell, four things really came through. Um, to summarise. First thing, girls just want to have fun. So, you know, the the most popular um, citation coming through, say from the folks group interviews and the questionnaires was that they enjoy the program and they want to play because they're with their friends having fun. That's important in terms of, you know, future direction of the program, but also like, you know, if you're a coach and a teacher that it's important to know like exactly what girls want and their needs and those needs can be met. So girls just want to have fun. The second thing, building confidence and competence. So again, that came through in the findings that like if as a coach, as a teacher, you can provide that skill performance feedback, you know, that positive praise and encouragement in terms of trying to increase their confidence levels, their self-efficacy, making them feel good about themselves um, will really help going forward in terms of retaining girls in sport. The third thing coming through was that of social support. So you know, we can see from the findings that participants in group one perceived that they were actually, they felt they were getting, you know, higher support from their parents, from coaches, from their friends, more so than in, in participants in group two and group three. So those social support structures are so important to provide as a coach in a training session um, that, you know, girls, they need to have that kind of sense of belonging and connectedness, that positive praise and encouragement goes a long way. And last but not least, role models was a strong theme that came through. Um, and I suppose it's, it's an important one because um, in line with the 2020 campaign, which is, you know, all about empowering girls and women in sport, if she can't um, see, she can't be. So that kind of epitomizes, you know, the whole idea of role models that young girls, it's important for them to see, you know, what, what potentially they're, they're going to be doing in 10 years time and what they strive to be. Um, so that's really important. Like even those four things coming through from the study in terms of like putting the theory into practice, that if you can kind of embed those fun, enjoyment, social structures, building girls' self-confidence, building their skill, you know, giving them that, 
space and encouragement and also the provision of, of role models um, all those small but positive steps will go a long way in terms of you know igniting girls passion and their interest in ladies football and sport um, but most importantly retaining girls in the game as well and um, that was just a quick synopsis of the, the Gaelic for Girls intervention study. Overall, it was really positive and going forward, you know, the, the programme has now been tailored um, and that will be embedded into the national programme um, with the aim, obviously, of trying to get more girls involved and trying to retain girls in sport. So um, my email and my Twitter details are below, so I would be happy to answer any questions you have regarding the study, regarding girls in sport, regarding ladies football. So thank you very much.